Hey what's up creators and today we're going to be going over the most important thing for taking your 3D and your levels inside of Unreal Engine to the next level and that is lighting. Unreal Engine has a fantastic lighting system called Lumen which is going to allow us to get some beautiful results. What I'm going to be doing as part of this video is I'm going to be introducing you to lighting inside of Unreal Engine, how you can create the different types of lights, what they do, how you can go through all of the different settings, introduce you to skylights and HDRIs, and by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of how lights work and how you can apply it to your very own scene. Okay, so I've just jumped into Unreal Engine 5 and you can see the environment here that we're going to be working with. For me, I have downloaded the architectural sample from Unreal Engine, but for this tutorial, you can use absolutely any level that you want. The reason why I've chosen this level for this tutorial is just because here we can see if I go ahead and press Alt and P to press play, you can see we've got some really good examples of objects that are going to move and we can see we've got dynamic lighting. We've got big reflective items like the television to really show you the power of Lumen and what it can do. With that being said, what I want you to do is find any scene on the Epic Marketplace or your own scene absolutely anything and what we're going to be doing is just getting rid of any lighting that we have and then just lighting from a complete blank canvas. That being said I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the lights in my scene and then from there we're going to move on and show you how to place all of the different types of light. Okay so with that being said then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go over to my world outliner in the top right hand corner and then I'm going to search for light in my world outliner and I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those. And what I've got now is a completely dark scene here. You can see I've got nothing visible apart from the windows. There is no lighting here whatsoever. Also, as an additional side note as well, one thing that I would like to recommend is that before we do any lighting, that you actually turn your game settings exposure off. So that way your exposure can be a solid value that does not change. Now for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my exposure here to 1. This is just a very good solid value. With that being done though, let's go ahead and jump into how we can actually start creating some lights. Let's go ahead and take a look now at how we can actually create some lights now that we have a blank canvas to work with. To do that, it could not be easier. We're just going to head over to that place actors panel. To access the Place Actors panel, again, all we need to do is go up to the top here and add in our Place Actors panel. And then if we go to the light section, we can see we've got a whole bunch of different lights available to us. And most of the time, the very first one we're going to be adding in is our directional light. The directional light is going to act like this sun. And you can see here, as soon as I place this, what we have here is we've got some sun that's now coming through the window. And if you have an outdoor scene, you're just going to see the sun just take over the whole scene. And what I want to do now is just show you how we can actually control this. And it could not be easier. What we're going to do is head over to our select and rotate objects mode here. And this is going to allow us to rotate our sun direction. And you can see it's allowing me to control the direction the sun is coming into my scene. So I can have a little play around with that and get the look that I want. Additionally, what I can also do to make this a little bit easier is if I hold down control and L, I can then use this funky little widget here to move this with a little bit more control here. And what I'm going to do is just get the lighting to a level that I like. And what I'm going to be doing for me is I'm actually going to see if I can get the light to come through this window here. So the window I'm after is this one. And what I've done here, you can see I've just had the light come through the window, bounce through and hit the floor there. And it's just working absolutely fantastic. So we have our directional light here now, but you can see there's not too much going on in terms of it bouncing around the scene or anything like that. And we also need to know how to adjust things like temperature and stuff. So Let's go through all of that. 
First and foremost, we have the intensity, which is simply just a slider here. And again, we can access this by clicking on the light and then we can see we've got this intensity slider and I can turn this up or down. We've also got light color. So if you wanted to give us a slightly blue tin or green tin or anything like that, we can have a little play around with that. We just choose the color and press OK. For me, because I want realistic lighting, I'm going to go ahead and set my saturation down to zero there as this should be a completely just plain white light. And instead, what I'm going to be doing is using the temperature to dial in the color here. So if I want this to be a little bit more summery, a little bit more warm, I can use this temperature value, which is a real world value measured in Kelvins. And I can set this to something like 4,500K here to get this nice warm look that we've got. And for me, this is absolutely perfect. We've got a couple of other settings in here as well, uh, which you might want to take a look at. You can't really see it too well right now, but it is cast shadows and effect world. If I turn this on or off, you can see whether or not this is going to cast shadows. If you're doing anything re realistic, I would recommend that you do use this for your directional light. And then you've got effects world, which is simply going to allow you to turn the light on or off. One of the more important settings that we have over here is called our indirect lighting intensity. If I turn this up or down, you can see straight away what this is going to do. So if I set this to one, which is the default, we get a little bit of sort of lighting leaking around over here. But then if I set this up to 10, you can see my room now is going to fill with light. It's looking beautiful already. I can even turn this up as bright as uh, 100 or something like that, like I have done just here. And you can see now my light is actually indirectly bouncing from the window onto the floor and around the scene. And it's actually picking up all of the colors at the very same time here to give us that indirect lighting. Now, you probably won't want to go as intense as 100 if you're working on outdoor scenes, but if you're working on interior scenes and directional lights are your main source of light, I would definitely recommend that you use this to your advantage. Okay, so we've now added the sun into our scene and honestly, it looks fantastic. And by using a combination of light color or temperature or even indirect lighting, we can see how we can really use this to bring our interiors or even exteriors to life. Let's go ahead and move on to the next type of light now, which is our point light. Our point light is really straightforward and our point light is going to be something that a lot of you that do 3D work are going to be familiar with. A point light is like an omni light. It's essentially going to be sending out light in a 360 degree radius from wherever you place it. And again, to place that, all I did there was just drag and drop to place it into my scene. And then with this, I've got very similar settings to what I had for the directional light. First and foremost, I've got my intensity and I can turn this up or down. I've got my light color here so I can set a specific light color. But one of the most important settings that we're going to get with all of these lights here, beside, besides the directional light and the skylight, is called our attenuation radius. And this is really, really important. Let me show you exactly what it's going to do. The attenuation radius is essentially going to control the maximum distance that the light can travel. And if we turn this down small enough, or if we have a big scene, we should be able to see a blue sphere around the light. This is the maximum distance the light can travel regardless of the brightness. So let's say I turn my brightness all the way up here to something like a thousand. What you're going to see is the main light source here is not actually going to be able to leave this area. Now, one thing to note with Lumen, because this is trying to be realistic, it is actually adding that indirect lighting to the rest of the scene. If you don't want that, feel free to just set that to zero. And what you can see here now is my light, regardless of the brightness, is controlled entirely by my attenuation radius here. Now, for me, again, for realistic lighting, especially with something like a point light, I like to leave that indirect lighting set to one and then just adjust my intensity to wherever I need it to be. 
Your point light can be used for many, many different things. What I'm gonna be doing in this scene here is I'm actually just gonna be using this as a light, which can go inside of these little bulbs here. And with this, I want these to be a little bit warm in color. So again, I'm going to set this to be completely white and I'm gonna use a temperature, a nice warm temperature here for the bulb. And then I'm just gonna turn this intensity up, turn the attenuation radius down, and you can see now we have a nice warm bulb. With this, we can use these point lights for almost anything in our scene. They are super, super versatile. Let's just go through those settings though, just to make sure that we're all covered here. So first things first, we've got the intensity like I showed you, light color, and attenuation radius. We've also got our source radius and our soft source radius as well, which are really important that I go over now. So first and foremost, our source radius is gonna be straightforward. If I move my light here and increase my source radius, you're going to see you get a inner sphere. And with this, this is where your light is going to be at its brightest. So if I was to take this object and say, put it in front of a television here or a surface where there's gonna be lots of reflections, what I should expect to see in that reflection is that I have my light and you can see we actually have a source where that light is coming from in our reflections. If I turn this up or down, you can see that source in the reflections. Additionally, what I also have is how diffused that source should be. If I turn this soft source radius up, we can see it becomes more diffused and has a different effect on the reflections. The last setting here that I'm gonna go over for our point light is simply going to be our source length, which allows us to change the shape of our light source. It's just gonna allow us to make it a little bit more tubular. And with that, what I can then do is go ahead and rotate this. That is our point light, really straightforward and really versatile. Okay, so that's our point light. And what you'll have seen there is I actually introduce you to quite a few different settings there, such as attenuation radius and source radius. And you're gonna see that a lot of these settings that I'm going through now for the point light or have just gone through for the point light are gonna be exactly the same for the spotlight and the rectangle light that we're about to go over. So just keep an eye on all of those. The next type of light that I wanna go over is your spotlight. Your spotlight is also another one which you're gonna be using quite often. It's essentially going to allow you to create a focused source of light which comes out from a specific spot. So again, I'm just going to my light section here and I'm gonna add that spotlight into the scene. And something like the spotlight is actually perfect for this. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm going to move it and I'm gonna place this in here. And now let's go through some of these different settings here to understand exactly how this is going to work. Now, the main settings for this spotlight is you can see we have this outer cone around the spotlight. And this is gonna tell us again, how far the light can travel sort of in terms of a cone. And it's also going to tell us in terms of a distance as well. So the light is just gonna be shining brightly all throughout this area here. Let's go ahead and show you how we can control this to make it more focused. And the way we do this is in the settings. Again, we've got normal settings like intensity and light color and also attenuation radius. But what we really wanna take a look at with our spotlight is our settings here for inner cone angle and outer cone angle. If I control my outer cone angle, you can see the area that my spotlight can affect and you can see the light is going to change accordingly. I can also change the inner cone angle. The inner cone angle is where the light is going to be at its brightest. So you can see here, anywhere within this inner cone, the light is gonna be at 100% brightness and then between this point and this point, so between the inner cone and the outer cone, it's just gonna be doing a bit of a smooth fall off here and this is how we're gonna be controlling all of this. Again, a lot of these settings here that we've got are gonna be very, very similar to what we had for the point light. 
So I can do things like set it to use a temperature if I wanted to, and I can set things like effects world and cast shadows and indirect lighting as well. So with that being said, I'm not going to go over any more of these settings. The only important one that you really want to play around with there is just your inner cone and outer cone. And of course, just your standard stuff for intensity and light color and temperature, etc. Feel free to have a play around with this in your own time. The next type of light I'm going to introduce you to is again going to be something which is very, very commonly used. And that is the rectangle light. It just essentially allows you to create a light in a rectangular shape and control it entirely. Let's show you how that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that rectangle light into the scene. Again, in the Place Actors panel, we're just going to the light section. We're going to go to the rectangle light and we're going to place it in the scene. With this rectangle light, you can see here, we have the light and it's only shining in one direction. And that is because it's coming out of this rectangular shape here in the light. And with this, I can turn up the intensity to make this brighter or darker. I can change the color, etc. But what's really important with this light is that we can control the source. So we can control how big this rectangle is. And the way I can do this is by going to my source width and my source height. So I can make this wider or taller and I can control all of this. I also have my barn door length and my barn door angle, which is going to allow me to control how focused this rectangle light is. So in terms of use cases of where you might want to use a light like this, you might want to use it for lighting cars, or you might want to have a, let's say you've got a television here and the light is shining. What we can do is we can actually have the light come out of this by just placing a rectangle light over it. Additionally, what we can also do is we can use these rectangle lights to help us create light that is coming from our windows. And this is something you're going to do quite often. And I'm just going to place this light in here. And with this, I'm then just going to shape this up. And the way we shape this up again is just by taking that source width from that source height, make sure it's the right size. And now you can see we've got a nice bit of light coming from that window. Albeit it is the wrong color. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and set that. Now I want it to match the light color of our directional light. So what I'm going to do is in my world outliner, I'm going to go ahead and search for my directional light. And with this, I'm going to take that temperature, which is 4,500 K. And then I'm going to put that temperature into here by setting use temperature and pasting that in. And now you can see we've got a nice, bit of light coming through this window in that rectangular shape. And again, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and place another one of these, move it into position and just adjust that height. And you can see here, I'm using this as a really great tool for bringing additional light into my scene from areas like my windows here. Okay, so that is our rectangle light. And again, you can see there, it's something you're gonna be using quite a lot, whether it be for televisions or windows, or even just having nice lights that you can use for lighting objects. The last type of light that I want to introduce you to now is the skylight. The skylight is gonna allow you to bring some ambient light into your scene to soften up some of those shadows. Let's go ahead and show you exactly how that's going to work. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and create a skylight. So to do this again, we're going to go over to our place actors panel and we're going to be dragging and dropping in a skylight. Now with this, you can see straight away, it has added in a lot of ambient light into our scene and it's really helping to soften up the shadows. But the important thing with this skylight is we need to be able to set where that light is coming from. And that's the first thing we're going to do. We can do two things. We can have this be captured from the scene, or we can plug in something called a HDRI. And I'm going to be showing you how we can do both. So first and foremost, let's take a look at how we can do this with real time capture in our scene. You are going to need to have a sky atmosphere component for this to work. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and drag and drop this in if you haven't got one already. 
just so you can see exactly what that component is, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my fog for a second. The sky atmosphere component is essentially going to allow us to have a level of lighting that is distributed throughout the sky, imitating, you know, kind of what a sky looks like, where we have the blues and then we have a slightly different color as it gets closer to the earth here. And with that inside of my skylight now, I can actually have it take that information and I'm not going to go into the sky atmosphere component right now, but it's going to take that color information and it's going to be placing it throughout our scene. And with this, if I was to go ahead and turn up my intensity scale, turn this up or down, you can see it's going to start bringing all of that color information in and just giving us a slightly more natural look here throughout our scene. So feel free to use that. Alternatively, if you want a realistic kickstart on your lighting, you can use something called a HDRI. And I'm going to show you what one of these looks like. A HDRI is essentially just a cube map. It's just a sphere with color information projected onto it. Now, inside of Unreal Engine, you saw here, it's got some very, very simple colors. It's just got a gradient where it's blue, dark blue at the top, and then just going down. If you want this to be realistic, more like the, the real world, then you can take a HDRI image like this and you can import it into Unreal and tell Unreal to use that for the ambient lighting. So let's go ahead and do that. I would recommend you head over to a website like Polyhaven to download a HDRI and then download it as a HDR file. This site is completely free. If you have HDRIs already, you can also use those. And once I've downloaded that, I'm going to import it into Unreal Engine. And again, really straightforward. I'm just going to drag and drop and I'm going to place this into my content browser. With that done, if I go back to my skylight now, I can now go to real time capture, turn that off, and I can tell it the source type is now going to be a cube map. And with that, I can drag in my HDRI I just imported and bring that in. And now you can see here, it's bringing in ambient light, but it's imitating that ambient light as if it came from this HDR file that we just imported. And again, we can turn the brightness of this up or down to control that ambient light. Okay, with that done, that is our skylight in our scene. And we now have a really solid understanding of how we can use that skylight to get some ambient light in our scene. At this point, we should also have our interior lighting or our lighting in a really good place. You can see on the screen now exactly what I've done by just simply creating those lights that we walked through. That being the directional light, which is going to be our sun, the point light, which is just going to allow us to create a point of lighting in our scene, the rectangle light, which is going to allow us to create a rectangular source of light like the window or a television or something like that, and then also the spotlight that's going to allow us to create a targeted set of light for our scene. What I want you to do now is take the knowledge that you've gained from this video, where we've created all of these different types of lights, and apply it to your very own scene. With that being said, I'm very excited to see what you guys are all able to create, and I'd love to see that in our community Discord server. If you're not in that already, be sure to go ahead and join it, the link for which is in the description, showcase your work, ask any questions you might have about lighting, or even just meet other people like yourselves that are doing exactly this. For now though, that's everything that I wanted to go over. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.